the frills wave layer, this one, is, uh, let me check what's going on, yeah, so it's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the graph editor, you can see that's a lot of offsetting I've done, and so it's being driven from the first rotation, then the child, the children are getting rotated afterwards, and then it's falling off towards the end, and this is just more of a left to right turn on the frill. Now you can combine this with a rotation of the neck. So if the neck is rotating, let's turn that on as well, the neck is rotating, you can also have that animation overlap also happening on it. You see? Obviously the, the uh, neck one is not um, synced properly, it needs to be delayed for the roar. So, and then I offset, so I did them on every frame and then I've offset them by quite a bit, so every fourth or fifth frame. I have not snapped them yet, by the way. They are not snapped. So I can move them now on the roar and they will, uh, they will uh, snap to a key and move them over. Oops, I'm still in exponential mode, by the way. So I can even increase all of this already, it's nice. And I'm gonna put it back to constant and close that so I don't mess around again. And I'm gonna move that over. So that frame one we're starting up here and uh, yeah, so frame one-ish. Okay, so frame one and then these are starting to jiggle. If I quickly cache this in, uh, second, Okay, so if we're looking at the roar, the controllers are jiggling around as the mouth is opening. And then from far, you know, you can scale up the layer as well. So the inner mouth roar has actually been scaled down for me. But if I scale it up, uh, we'll see just how aggressively aggressive those keyframes are. Depends on how far away you are from the camera. This is another very important thing. Dome, we have this feature where the, where the feet get squished like that. A really, really cool feature. So you would have this, by the way, on as the dragon touches the whatever it's landing on, you'd have it already turned on and then you'd have to counter animate against this. What I mean by that is if we, if we have Okay, so I can I can quickly animate it now. So if we have contact here, so let's just say that is the contact frame. Let me turn on shadows and whatnot. Let's say that's the contact frame there. Okay, we'll set the key on this foot. Let's go to frame one, set the key. Then as the foot is going, if I turn out now on the finger press, right, so Oh, I'm in sync mode. Hold on a minute. Let me just lift that up. Okay, set the key. Now, if if uh, the dragon is if if that is the contact pose, and I use the finger press, uh, let's say frame five, I use the, use the finger press. You can see that it actually lifts the foot off the ground. There's a gap now. So what I mean by counter animating it is if you want to use that finger press, which is all up to you, you can maximize it, I think 150 is, well, I don't know what the limit is, but then you have to counter animate this down even more to accommodate for the squish. Does that make sense? All right, so when you have contact, you'll need to continue the feet down to compensate for that, and then do, do the same when the dragon's feet, um, Dragon leaves the leaves the um, the ground, right? So you leave the ground, you'd be animating it up, and then you'd be simultaneously turning off the finger press.